Good morning, good morning, and welcome to Catherine's Garden. This is a September day and it seems like the temperature is rising that it's going to be fairly warm out today. The sun is shining and it's quite beautiful in the garden this early morning. As you can hear the dogs are barking. You can hear some of the city sounds in the background but the garden itself is just very beautiful and responding well to the sun and the warmth because it's been kind of cold lately in the night but now today it is just perfect and the garden is responding to this day this joy it is the joy of the garden especially for this time I I'm so happy just seeing it and the thing is is now it's starting to change color do you notice that it started off a beautiful yellow and now it has this peachy color which is so pretty it's different from my other one my other one was more of a pink color but this is a beautiful peachy soft pink blush color love its shape. I love its shape and design. It's so pretty. It's almost like a ball gown. And there's more to come. it's not finished it has made me very happy so let's take a look at what's happening and what's changing as you can see the uh, purple perella is going to seed but this hydrangea bush has really enjoyed itself this day this year <laughs> it's expanded and it's growing very very well and uh, let's look at the flowers and how they are changing color. color is just so beautiful and look at this the flower of the purple perella now changing to seed I am just amazed at the color of these leaves it is such a royal plant and check out the back it's edible and people use it for sushi and other delicacies. I haven't tried it yet because I just enjoy it. And it's going to seed all over the garden, but I don't care. Have its way. It can just do its thing. But look at the sun shining on this hydrangea. Now this is a bridal bouquet. Hydrangea, it starts off white, then it turns blue, but then it, it changes to this beautiful, 
beautiful color. I don't have a lot of them, of blooms, so that's why I'm not going to cut them. Um, but I did last year have a lot of blooms. Um, my hydrangeas, my mop head hydrangeas did very, very well last year in the garden. And so I was able to cut and create a reef. And then this is barberry. And the barberry with the leaf of the purple perella, they contrast really, really well. So I really love this corner and how it turned out. Right now in the garden, this is one of the featured beds and it's just beautiful the way that it's turned out with these dahlias and the uh, zinnias continue to flower. Just a beautiful, beautiful display and then of course the chrysanthemums continue to open up and also the sun and patience. I never tire of showing you this because it's just beautiful and that's what my September has to offer me this great beauty. Let's go down a little deeper into the bed and you can see what is happening here. As you can see things are dying back and it's a little dry. It's been very dry actually. Um, oh, look at that squirrel. I don't know if you can see him. There he is. Mm -hmm. They have been having a heyday in the garden because I have some oak trees and they just love um, eating the acorns and um, digging all over the yard. But look at this, this combination. These white impatience look so good with the chrysanthemums. So fresh and beautiful. It almost looks like a bridal bouquet, don't you think? I wanted to show you these. They're wild asters and they just spread all over the garden. But I love it at this time because I know that when these are out that we are heading into fall and soon uh, it will be winter yeah i know i'm looking deep into the future but that's just how i feel it makes me realize that i have to enjoy the garden and one thing about the garden it is not boring you can enjoy the garden in all of its phases. And this is what has been happening with this vegetable patch back here. It's not a patch anymore. It's actually expanded and we pushed it out so that next year it will be ready for planting. Um, what my husband has done is uh, he's laid it out so that we can then put the leaves from the oak trees all in this area here and around here and cover it up, cover up the, um, 
the ground and allow the leaves to um, nourish the ground. It's of course very woodlandy here in my backyard. You can see all the trees, There's so many different trees. And so um, we can take the natural benefits of the leaves to nurture the ground so that when we plant in it that it will be productive. Yeah, this is the time where we really have to think about next year and planning for next year. What are we going to do? How are we going to do things differently? Now this area is going to need cleanup and I have a lot of alliums in the back bed um, and also the hostas got kind of overtaken by um, the purple perella and the ferns but I like I like things changing I don't have a problem with that I love to see the development of the garden and the changes in the garden that makes it interesting and exciting I'm not bored and um, that's why I'm able to show you the garden um, and have so many garden tours because the garden is continually evolving and changing every single day and every season something new is coming up something new and exciting is showing up look at that and I've become a steward of the garden where I'm able to uh, change things up you know add things subtract things and that's what makes gardening fun because we're contributors to the beauty of the garden do you see how these beautiful asters just add to this corner I couldn't have done it any better look at that and then when we look back at the garden through here we see the color arrangement now I had a hand in that with the coleus moving it that red coleus there and the plantings so when I look through here to the back of the garden it is very beautiful and I can see, look at that. Mm -hmm. I am just so so happy and satisfied about my little food forest back here and I just planted the pear tree and I planted uh, before the Asian pear tree the peach tree and the apple tree and you can go back and look at my videos I'm going to try and um, provide a card or put it in the back screen so that you can uh, check out my planting of the pear tree <laughs> which is looking so good here Look at that. Yeah, I have the Asian pear tree. And last year, um, I just planted this in and enjoyed them. Enjoyed eating them. They've been just so beautiful. And this is my peach tree. The peach tree is looking good. Um, and the apple tree. Now back here, I had those yellow flowers. I don't know what the names, the name of it is, um, but I want it to go to seed. So I've just kind of allowed it to go wild and go to seed, but I'm going to chop it down and um, allow these white asters. This is another type of white aster that's starting to bloom. And I want them to get their time in the sun too so I'm going to have to do some work back there but in the meantime my famous and lovable and wonderful 
tuberous begonias. Mm. Look at this. They just drop. They just naturally drop. Look at the size of this bloom. Isn't that beautiful? It's as big as the palm of my hand. I just love this. And they just started to just continue to, to bloom. When they got going, it's just like nonstop. For the whole month of um, August and now into September, they're just blooming away. But I have to catch it before the first frost because what will happen is, is that it will um, destroy the tubers because they're not cold hardy so I have to uh, pay attention to the temperatures and as soon as the weather changes to make sure that I um, remove them or dig them up and um, get them ready winterize them <laughs> here's another one absolutely beautiful yeah and then as I was telling you about this wild aster stuff like that. And then the bees. The bees just love this mint. This is um, apple mint. I just love my um, marigolds there. I have to save those seeds and that's something that I have to be diligent about is gathering the seeds and saving the seeds. I am so glad that my plum tree did well this year and these apple trees I purchased these from Lowe's and they look pretty good they're growing. I have to figure out what I'm going to do with them next. I want to ex ex expaliate I think is the word um, and just like pull out the branches you know, extend the branches so that I can get um, a lot of pear, no, apples, excuse me, and um, we'll have to see how that works out. I have two of them, and this one here, I've allowed the tomato plant to just crawl all over it, but it's okay. It's be, it's like a, a trellis for it, <laughs> and it seems like it's enjoying it. It's not um, suffering or anything. Of course, soon it's not going to be there. And look at my cabbage. You know, the garden is a place for experimentation. The yellow egg plums. Oh my goodness! I was so pleased with this plum tree and it looks healthy and nice and happy here so that's a good thing now look at this look at this bindweed this is called bindweed <laughs> but the flowers are so pretty look at that it looks so innocent like it can't harm and hurt anything but look at that it's a member of the of the morning glory family and it comes out in the morning it looks so pretty look at that so I don't even have the desire to pull it out because now at least it's given me some kind of beauty in the garden but you know what the only problem is is that the seeds catching the seeds but that's buying weed for you well my fig tree fig tree is doing wonderful I'm thinking about cutting some of this wood and starting um, plants. I think Backyard Gardener that she has fig trees and I saw one of her um, one of her videos, her recent videos that speak to this and the fact that you can um, propagate the fig tree and the fig tree plants and I did one before and I actually have one over there that I'm starting um, so that's an idea because uh, it's the problem is overwintering it and I think if I dig this out I'll be able to probably get some root 
and be able to start a new plan. At least that's what I'm hoping for. And check this out. Somehow I've got to get this plant in that back bed over there by the um, by the coleus. I want to put these flowers in that bed so that at this time I will have color in the garden and um, put it in some of the other areas too. So I'm hoping that they will go to seed, which they are, and then I'll catch it and be able to sprinkle some of the seeds in the back bed. But even if they grow here, I can dig up the plants and move them, transplant them over to that area. And that's my goal. But uh, isn't this beautiful? I love the soft yellow. I love the soft yellow better than, more than that deep color, bright yellow. I love this, yeah. And then look at that in the background. Those um, hosta plants have flowered. And just the combination here is just so pretty. Uh, and I didn't have anything to do with it, or much. <laughs> well, here is another hydrangea bush. It's similar to the one, actually it's the same, it's the um, bridal bouquet hydrangea um, and this is how it begins and then as the season progresses it gets turned to this very deep purple color. You can see the contrast there. Isn't that beautiful? And we've created a new area here and I think I'm going to um, propagate some of these flowers. I'm going to propagate the hydrangea and add them in this area. Now here we are. I just like how the light shines through the leaves. My sedum about to um, end. Look at that, they're changing. But so are the purple perilla. So that the two of them just flowing in such great harmony. And check out this. Each day it's just getting different and developing such a rich tone. I mean, I just, I'm showing you like the same things over and over again, but it's because it's continually changing and um, just looking so beautiful. Things are pretty much going to see. Oh, look at this. Yeah, the cosmos have reflowered. Isn't that fresh? I'm so glad I didn't um, pull these up because I would miss this joy. I did go through and cut, you know, chop down a lot of them because it seems like there are the female and the male Cosmo flowers, Cosmos flowers, and um, this is just beautiful. Just when I think that the garden is dying back, it just becomes alive again.
Let's see how that okra is doing. Look at that. Is that an okra? Yay! I bought the okra seeds from Baker's Creek and um, so this is my first time really growing okra. I started late. I had purchased some okra starts but they didn't do very well. But um, I went to, I decided to order them from Baker Creek and I planted them here. And um, look at how they just blend so well with the purple perella. Look at the purple perella leaves and the okra leaves and the flowers. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. But next time I need to give them a place of honor. But look at how it blends in so well with my rose bush here. The coloring. This is my urban cottage garden look. <laughs> Yeah, so this is a uh, knockout rose, a red rose, but they've all just come together and I like the purple and the pinks. Well, I'm going to end here. Look at my zebra grass. And look at the, the fronds in the light. Isn't that beautiful? Against the my neighbor's tree. It just looks so pretty. The fronds. With that deep purple, purpley leaves of the maple tree. With the uh, fronds of the zebra grass. Absolutely pretty. By the way, how is your garden growing? I hope that all is going well with you and that you're enjoying these fall days. Fall begins September 23rd. The autumn season begins September 23rd. So I hope that you are enjoying your garden. How is your garden growing? I hope all is well. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye.